In this tutorial, you'll learn how to use your calculator, your graphing calculator, to find the zeros or roots of a function. We'll be referencing problem 82 on page 78 of your textbook, so make sure you're turned there now. Now in problem 82, uh, it has h of theta equals 1 plus theta minus 3 tangent of theta. So since we're using a trigonometric function, the first thing you want to do is to go to mode and make sure that it's set to radians and not degrees. Make sure that radians, radian is highlighted. After you've done that, the next step is to enter it into the y equals menu. Now obviously our calculator is going to use x and y instead of theta and h. So instead of 1 plus theta minus 3 tangent theta, we will enter 1 plus x minus 3 tangent of x. So go ahead and enter that in. 1 plus x minus 3 tangent of x. Close the parentheses. Now if you graph in the standard window, which would be zoom 6 if you don't already have it set to that, you get something that looks like this. Now if you look in the directions, we're specifically wanting to find the zero of the function in the interval from zero to one. So let's go ahead and focus in on that interval. Go to window, let's change our x minimum to negative one, and make sure you use the negative sign, not the minus. And this one is for subtraction, this one down here is for negative. So hit enter and let's change our x max to 2. Now go back to the graph and you can see that we have 1 0 in, in the inter interval from 0 to 1 and that's what we're wanting to find. And our calculator can approximate that fairly closely. Now if it involved, obviously if it asks for an exact answer You'd only be using this for verification purposes because our calculator is not going to give it to you a, in an exact form. Say it involved the square root. It will give you a dec decimal approximation involving that square root, not the exact answer. But to use the zero capabilities of your calculator, go to second. Right above trace is calc. The second option here is zero. So choose that option. Now we'll first ask for a left bound. Since we're going from above the x-axis to below the x-axis, and again, that's all that a root or a zero is, is where the function crosses the x-axis. But since we're going from above to below, we want the left bound to be positive as far as y is concerned, and the right bound to be negative. If it we're going from below to above, we'd want the left bound negative and the right bound positive. Again, in this case, we're going from above to below, so let's choose a left bound, scroll back until it's positive, hit enter, and then we want our right bound to be on the other side of the x-axis, so we want y to be negative. Again, hit enter, and then we'll ask guess. So again, hit enter, and it gives us a decimal approximation for this zero and to the closest four decimal places as the instructions say our zero would be at x equals 0 0.4503 and it's that simple